Hi there. In this video, I'll be oversimplifying a very important concept while building front-end applications with JavaScript, known as debounce or debouncing. Now, if you go online, you most likely will see the piece of code that is showing up right on the screen right now. Now, while this code is just a couple of lines, the problem I found with this is that many people are not able to wrap their head around this very simple function. So here's what I thought. Is it possible to implement the bounce on just an instance of a particular function or let's say an event listener where you need it and not necessarily have to wrap your head around these um, lines of code that represent a debounce and probably even understand the bounce more before using this global debounce method. My name is Aremo Smog and this is Web Boss YouTube channel. If it's your first time on the channel, kindly subscribe, like, and of course, drop your comments in the comment section. Let's get into it. So for this particular application, I'll be using the Star Wars API available at swappy.dev slash API. And we are going to be using the search endpoint specifically. I will not be showing anything in the DOM, but you are going to be seeing results right here in the console. So let's get into it. So the first thing, of course, you want to do for your search input is to add an event listener or attach an event listener, right? And the event that we want to listen to is key up. That's going to catch when the user types something in. Now, we want to pass and want to catch an event here, which basically represents the search input itself. And I'm just going to come over here and say search input value equals e dot target dot value. And of course, we want to log that, then log that. Then come over here, give it a sec to load up. Then I'm just going to come over here and say Luke Skywalker. Now, you can already see what the problem is, right? Every single time you enter something into the search input, it immediately gets processed. Now, imagine you have an application that is being used by thousands or millions of users, and every single time that someone types something into the search input, you are eating your back end. That's definitely not a good thing. So the first thing we are going to do is try to optimize this console log, then we are going to attach it to an API declaration. So the first thing you probably would think of is, is there a way to delay the execution of this console.log such that it does not happen immediately, right? And of course, the way to do that in JavaScript is to use the set timeout function. Uh, I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna say console.log and we are going to make the delay. I'm going to declare the delay outside of here and say delay equals one milliseconds. So I'm just going to say ms equals uh, one sec, right? Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pass delay in here. Save it up and let's come back to our application. Here's what we are going to observe. If I enter L, it doesn't get executed uh, immediately. U, this doesn't happen immediately as well. K, doesn't happen immediately. E, right? Of course, this gives some form of buffer in that when you are triggering a request, the request is not fired immediately. But there's still a problem. The request to get fired eventually. And that's not very helpful because at the end of the day, I might just want to type, let's say, Luke, right? And even though there is a delay, right? Everything gets executed eventually, which means that the resource that is being used on the back end is still heavy. So what can we do? Now we have the ability to be able to delay our execution. Then the next thing is to be able to kill that execution before the next one happens, right? And the way to do that is to clear timeout, right? So what you want to do is come over here and say clear timeout. And I'm going to explain this, right? This might look a little bit intimidating at the moment. Clear timeout. But what timeout do we want to clear, right? I can simply come over here and say search timeout equals this guy and clear it out, right? And say search timeout, right? But of course, this guy has not been declared. So I can just come over here and say let's search timeout. Let's search timeout and yeah. We have that. I'm going to run this application again, then I'm going to explain what's happening behind the scene. So now, if I enter Luke, you can see that the execution is delayed until I stop typing for one sec. And we can see only one output in the console 
which is what? Luke. Now, okay, let's go over what's happening behind the scene. When the page first loads, we set some values, such as the delay to 1,000 millisecond. Then we declare our variable for search timeout. And of course, we attach an event listener to our search input. Now, if the user comes in here and type the letter L, that's immediately after the page loads, or the first time the page loads, right? We catch our search input value, which of course is L, right? Then we attempt to clear the timeout of search timeout. But the problem is we are trying to kill something that does not even exist. So you can literally come here and check and say, if search timeout, right, that's the only time that we want to kill the execution of our search timeout. Then we then go ahead to carry out our set timeout, right? That's the first time that we're executing, remember? So we set timeout and we delay it by 1,000 millisecond, which means that it is in one second time, right? This delay can go up to like, let's say 10 seconds, right? Which means that it is until after 10 seconds that this block of code gets executed, right? Now, if the user types something into the search input in less than 10 seconds or one second, you, right, here's what happens. Our search input gets updated to be L, U, and this time around, we have a value for search timeout, which is basically the value for when we entered L, which is the first instance, right? Now, because it is less than uh, 10 sec, we're able to clear timeout, which basically kills the execution, which, which, which basically kills the block of code that is supposed to log L in the terminal, right? And we then go ahead and run set timeout again, right, with this updated value of LU, and of course, we delay that by 10 seconds as well. If in less than 10 seconds, K is being, uh, K is being entered into the search input, we, we make a check, oh, it has a value, which is the value when the, val uh, when the search input value was LU. We clear, the type, uh, we clear the timeout, which means that uh, with the value of LU, it is no longer being executed, and that goes on and on. If after I entered K, I do not do anything in the search input, which is basically, um, which is basically not entering anything into the search input, then this guy is going to wait for 10 seconds and is going to get executed. So let me save this up and come back here into the browser and let's just look over things again. Um, so I'm going to say Luke Skywalker was here, right? And we have to wait for 10 seconds before this shows anything to us. So just a couple more sec and it shows us that Luke Skywalker was here. Thank you so much if you made it to this part of the video. I hope that this explanation helps you at least to be able to understand the way the bounce or the bouncing work in JavaScript better. You can now take some time out to go study that code for the bouncing again and see if some of the concepts that have been explained in this video helps you to understand that block of code better. If it's your first time on the channel, kindly subscribe. Please drop your comments in the comment section and like so that the algorithm can recommend this video for some other people. Cheers and don't forget to build like a boss.